there. That when you begin to dissect Jericho, it is a city that even though there was a lot of business people, Jericho was a place you really didn't want to be found. Because Jericho was a place where people got beat up. Jericho was a place where people got robbed. Jericho is that rough side of town that you know you need to not be over there at a certain time, but yet you need to be there because what you're looking for is over there. They said that Jesus was leaving, and when he left, not only did his disciples go with him, but there was a number of people that were literally with them that were walking along the way, not because they were trying to get the word, not because they wanted a change in their life, but most of the people that were walking with him, this crowd of individuals was walking with him based upon what they could receive from him. So in the text, he says, as they were walking, here's this blind man that was doing a whole bunch of hollering in the midst of what was going on. Because what you need to know, he wasn't hollering for Jesus at first. He was hollering for help. He was begging individuals for money. He was begging individuals for food. He was begging individuals to help get him out of the circumstances that he was in. That everybody that walked by realistically didn't pay him any attention because when you beg for so long after a while, people stop hearing you call. Right. I wish I had some witnesses in here this morning that you got some people that really get on your nerves. You get tired of every time they see you, you see them. They got their hand out. Every time you walk around, they always begging you that you get to a point when you try to find other avenues to get to where you need to be just so you can avoid them. And here, this blind beggar hears this crowd talking about Jesus. And when he hears the crowd, he doesn't call Jesus' name right away because he wanted to know which Jesus was. Because during that time, there was a whole lot of Jesuses walking around acting as if they were the Savior. But there was only one Jesus of Nazareth that gave you blessings, that gave you healing, that gave you direction, that looked beyond your sickness and blessed you. The other ones were taking advantage, but this Jesus of Nazareth was doing more giving than he was receiving. Mm -hmm. That this blind man hears that Jesus of Nazareth is in the city and he says, hey, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. I, I need to pause for the cause one more time because realistically, you can call a whole lot of people. You can call your mama. You can call your daddy. You can call your sisters and brothers. You got some friends you can call, but ain't nothing like calling Jesus when you really need a healing, when you really need a deliverance. Because the Bible declares us at the name of Jesus, we can find new life. And this blind man says, watch this, he says, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And if there's nothing else, I, I, I realistically, we need to have more people that come to church and ask God to have mercy on them and quit acting like God owes them something. Wow. Mercy is a cry for forgiveness. Mercy is a cry for compassion. Mercy is a cry for God to give his steadfast love to you, not act like God owes it to you, well, but that God will have compassion on you and just bless you because of who he is. Because if we were to be honest in this house this morning, there's a whole lot of us that need forgiveness, but we really don't deserve it. There's a whole lot of us that need compassion, even though we're not compassionate to others. There's a whole lot of arrogance in us that we think that we're doing God a favor when we show up. But when I come to church, I come to church with intention of giving God just praise for what he's done for me because he didn't have to wake me up this morning. He didn't have to call me in my right mind. He didn't have to make my limbs move the way they move. He could have left me in a wheelchair. He could have left me on my sick bed, but thanks be to God, he keep looking beyond my fault and giving me another opportunity so when I come into his house, I got to give him the best praise that I got down on the inside. And even though I ain't feeling it, I can clap my hands. Even though I ain't feeling it, I can nod my head. Even though I ain't feeling it, I can shake something. Because God doesn't have to let anything shake. He could have just left me numb. So I come to church with intention on praising him. I come to church to give him glory because I don't deserve forgiveness, but he gave 
and calls your name, you've been crying over your sickness. God delivers you from sickness and you think that's all God got for you. Amen. That you can happy about the sickness being delivered. But you ain't praise God that while you were sick, he was still taking care of you. While you were in your doctor's hour, he was still providing for you. You mean to tell me the only praise you got is because he healed your body? You ought to be thanking him. Because not only did he heal your body, but your life is still on. Your gas is still on. Your car is still in the driveway. You still got a roof over your head. Is there anybody in the house that don't know how to just praise God for the small stuff? And the only way you can praise him is the big stuff. You out your mind, baby. When I was laying in that bed, all I could think about was my God was keeping me. He still got me up to go to work. Some people are only your friends because of what you can offer. 
instead of what you get. Because they really, they really don't want to be your friend. But because you connected to the Lord, they trying to get close to you. That maybe sooner or later you will pray for them. way 
I know how. I don't need to say now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul and keep. What I can do is get on my knees and say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, I need you to stop by. God, I need you to make a way out of no way. Open up your mouth, God. Here's what I really need. I need you to bless my children. Bless my
this man got his sight immediately. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Watch this. When I looked at it immediately, it really blew me up. Because when I began to look at what it meant by immediate, the, uh, the definition for Webster, it literally means instantaneous. At that second, at that moment, right then and there. But the Bible showed me something a little bit different. That our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. Amen. And our time is not his time. Amen. That there's an indication, watch this, that your blessing or your healing has already showed up the moment you called on God. It just ain't got to you yet. That God want to see what you going to do while your healing has not manifested yet. Are you going to give up? Are you going to throw in the towel? Are you going to stay at home and not move? But can you praise me while you sick? Can you praise me till the deliverance happens? Can you trust me and forget what everybody else is saying? Because immediately your change has happened. Immediately your blessing has been restored. It just ain't got to you yet. But in God's time, you already know. Yes. We look at these stories as if these were just tales of the crib. <laughs> Meaning that there were tales from people that have died. But there are some people in the house Amen. that can testify Amen. that even though we preach it from the Bible, God has healed you. God has delivered you that you can be a testimony to those that sit around you. That God is a healer. God is a way maker. God is a bridge of the trouble.
people were buying houses in Maple Heights for $40,000 and $30,000 and 